thousand. I don't need molten metal yet. I just need a good old fashioned T eight hundred walking around. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe know. Bryan. Everybody watching us live, we're just hanging out in the pre-show. If you're a patron, go back and listen to that. Watch it if you want. If not, we have an uncut channel, which our live stream is released a week later. If you want to go check that out, it's uh, one of our suggested channels on our YouTube, which is just forward slash Linux Gamecast. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Joe, you're getting ready to go hang out with all of the family. You get to do the rounds, as some <laughs> people do. Like, I got to go visit this person, this person, this yeah. person, this person, <laughs> this person, this person, this person, this person. Yes. I got four families to visit. <laughs> of that, That's my family, but the extended family. So I don't uh, know. We, I, I like the idea of just <laughs> randomly visiting from families. Yeah, that like, actually would be like, interesting. It's that weirdo from down the street again. <laughs> I can enjoy all the food <laughs> at their table. <laughs> yeah, so true. So we won't be doing LWW next week for a holiday vacation. <laughs> But we will be back the following week to start off the New Year's. Woohoo! And happy holidays to all our viewers and patrons. And to celebrate, I'm wearing my rare LGC Hill Santa shirt. That's H A I L Santa shirt. <laughs> From quite a few years ago, Vin made that. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, I just made one of those because I always wanted to do a Hail Santa thing because that, that is my response when. Uh... <laughs> For it's even outside of Christmas too. Like when somebody gets in my face about something, they're like, yeah, I'm like, hell, Santa. I just walk off. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I'm cool like that. I'm a 40 year old edge lord, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what have I been up to? <laughs> what have I been up to? Couple of things. Uh, database migration for Trackmania. Because I, I ran into a situation last week where uh, I have unattended upgrades set up on mm. the Trackmania server. And I'm like, just just felt like I needed to do a manual apt update. Just just see what's going on. Whoa. Make sure everything's working. And it's like, you know what? We can't find the public key for uh, MySQL. And I, I'm running like SQL SQL on this thing because <laughs> of this Trackmania stuff from years and years ago and like the best yeah. compatibility. I'm like, you know what? We're just going to do it. And I was running uh, version 5.7. And I'm like, what's going on here? And my first thought was like, oh, boy, I wait a minute, all right, then I go to the search and I tip in MySQL 5.7 EOL into life. That was in oh. October <laughs> of this year. So uh, I, I did a, uh, I was like, do, do I want to do an in-place upgrade to SQL 8, which I don't want to bother messing with and all that. And I had to wait up. I ended up just super easy, just exported the database, uh, wiped out SQL, installed Maria. Or Maria, I call oh, it Maria. Oh, Maria DB. Yeah. DB. Uh, yeah. Spooled that up, you know, read the docs, make sure it wasn't like wide open. I'm like, okay, I got this set up, popped it in, switched out some UTF stuff, and uh, spooled it up. Worked fine. Relatively painless. So, um, nice. yeah, I did that. Speaking of track mania for the rest of the holiday season, the rest of this week and all of next week, our track mania server is open to the public. Yay! Come check it out. We did that <laughs> last night. We had a bunch of people pop in and out and back in again. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hop into it this week um, by talking about something I ran into last week. I was just like browsing around and I, I saw a little news story about Microsoft and mm -hmm. AI. And I haven't bought into the AI hype. I'm more curious. I was like, where's this going to go? When are we going to get? You know, a T-800 is what I'm waiting for, right? I don't, yeah. I'm not looking for a T-1000. <laughs> I don't need molten metal yet. I just need a good old-fashioned T-800 walking around. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> there we on. go. <laughs> kind of keeping my eye on. And I'm always curious, you know, because AI has been the domain of Linux as well it should be. And mm -hmm. Microsoft said, hey, we have Windows AI Studio. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Tell me about it. Uh, Microsoft, they released a new tool and they say, hey, it's going to help developers jumpstart local AI development. And the fully meant, you guessed it, on Windows. Uh, Microsoft loves AI with a penguin attached to it. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> and according to Microsoft, uh, getting started with AI development locally on Windows is easier and faster than ever. It's a new AI experience. 
experience. And uh, they're even working on Windows AI VS Code extensions, so you know they're super serial. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> what caught me off guard with this is, now how do we test this new super fantastic tool from Microsoft? Well, step one is install Linux. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Windows yeah. AI Studio requires Woo-hoo. WSL and Ubuntu 18.4. <laughs> Or greater, and um, I was I was curious, Jill, earlier this week. I'm like, why is this Mastodon post I made getting all this traction? I'm, I'm getting a bunch yeah. of like retweets or retweets or whatever, <laughs> re not tweets, whatever you want to call them. And that's because uh, on this uh, its Foss post uh, was linked to, you know, what I said on the Mastodon step one yeah. install Linux. I'm like, oh great, that that's you know, you run into that. Sometimes you're like, awesome. you know, it's linked somewhere to <laughs> something, but you can never track it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could run out and uh, put some, I don't know, Linux on your Windows installs, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. WSL. Um, so, so this uh, requires Visual Studio Code to be installed as, as it is a preview package. It is preview packaged as a VS Code extension. And it also only works on NVIDIA GPUs for now. <laughs> I'm sure that will change in the future. But right now, it's just Team Green. Up next. Yeah. Firewire. Ooh. I've talked about this multiple times. This is a video I've worked yes. on, I don't know, for like a month, and I finally got it done. Why are we talking about Firewire audio interfaces? Oh, man, because you know what? Back in the day, kids, back in the day, if you had pro audio, no, we're not talking about your sound blasters. Here, let me pull this video up because that's how we launched this guy. You had something like this, right? Sound Blaster mm-hmm. 16 and all that. And as I point out in the video, Jill, that's mm-hmm. not a pro sound card because you know every single thing on that card you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, yeah. man, that's line <laughs> in, line out, got a game port and MIDI port. That's not professional because a pro sound card needs to have at least one thing on it that you don't know what it does. So I bring mm-hmm. out some examples of professional broadcast. PCI cards with things like that on the side of them. You're like, you got a headphone jack. You got a, something that looks like a VGA port. Yeah, a breakout dongle port. <laughs> and things like the RME 9632. Like, that's not for CDs either up top. And, um, you know, ADAT, light pipe, all the other fun things. But <laughs> this was a good solution. That's how you added pro, pro audio or, you know, really high-end audio to your system until these things started showing up. Apple, yeah. we can blame Apple for this. Um, <laughs> with the G4 Cube started rolling out, you had all these iMacs. They didn't have expansion slots. And all we had for USB back in the day was USB 1.1. And USB 1.1 wasn't that great. I mean, you could do maybe one, possibly two channels, max 48K. But fortunately, mm-hmm. Apple had Firewire on all of the iMacs and the G4 Cubes, and more importantly, their laptops. So in yeah. 2001, Motu released this guy just out of Sweet. nowhere. They dropped it out of orbit, the 828. And going from like, okay, well, we had two channels in, two channels out. This, oh, no, 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 a whole different game. This is when you still box 24-bit, 18 simultaneous inputs and outputs. Just plug it wow. into the Firewire, <laughs> ready to go. Now, Linux is just known for running older hardware. Like, that's one of the claim to fame to Linux. So like, you can still run this stuff on Linux. Then you would assume this is going to work. But I wanted to know how it was going to work in 2023. And I kind of made it a point to say, I'm, I'm not going to make a vintage gaming PC with my old AMD. A brand new, reasonably new AM4 system, 5600G. Not only does it work, can we use it? Is it usable? Is it still mm-hmm. good? And I'm going to use one of these, which is just a PCI Express Firewire card. I have recommendations, the two I use that I know that work. Now, we can go into the drivers and all that. Long story, just slightly longer. It works a treat. It works a treat. It is genuinely plug Mm -hmm. and play because we talked about it on this show. Might have been last year or at the very beginning of this year, the Firewire drivers for pretty much all Firewire audio interfaces have been added to the kernel. And one thing I did, one thing I did that pretty much everybody's just like, I'm going to stay hushed on is this. 
I A-B tested this original device from 2001 against a Motu from 2019. <laughs> this is legit. It's semi-scientific. They sound different. One doesn't sound better. And this is a point that I really, really try to drive home to people. By 2001, you think about that and you're like, that's old, right? That was a long time ago. You don't want to think about how long ago it was. I, I yeah. You. That was a long time ago. 2001, we figured out how to do analog digital conversion. Like we were good at it. We weren't figuring it out. It, there, there wasn't any quantum leaps to be made by that point. So that does mean that if you have an older device from 2001, 2005, 2010, 2012, 2015, it's going to work just fine. And it's going to sound just as good. Yay! Christmas bash. Oh boy. So since the holidays are upon us once again, I've actually decided to decorate my desktop for the festive season, as I do every year. And one of my favorite Linux scripts that is adorning my Linux terminal right now as we speak is a Christmas tree twinkling made in bash. It is called the Christ Bash Tree Script or the tree-en.sh for English and tree-es.sh for Spanish. And I, I'm just going to show it to you here. I'm going to share my desktop with the magic of WebRTC. It works well. <laughs> and it much, works much better on Jitsi than it used to back in the day. <laughs> so isn't it pretty, Ben? It's terrifying, Joe. <laughs> Don't you like it? <laughs> and this beautiful tree is available via curl uh, as a w get command at, for Docker or as a git clone. That's cool. That that was our holiday yeah. festivity. <laughs> Fedora Asahi Remix. We talked about this a couple times, especially when they switched over from um, Arch to Fedora. That was kind of a big mm -hmm. deal, Jill. Yeah, it was huge. So the most polished Linux distro for the Apple Silicon M1 and M2 Max is finally here. Introducing Fedora Asahi Remix based on Fedora Linux 39, which is actually a really extremely zippy distro with excellent 64-bit ARM support. And actually here on LWW, we, we covered when the Fedora Asahi Remix beta was announced back in August. And we talked about that the new Asahi Linux flagship distribution would be the Fedora Asahi Remix. The, the teams have been working together for a while, as well as, as, as working with uh, Arch Linux. And now the Fedora Asahi Remix has officially been released as a stable release. This is huge news. <laughs> we have a stable release of a Linux distro for the M1 and N2, M2 Max. And KDE Plasma is actually the flagship desktop environment with complete Wayland support, audio support, and OpenGL 3.3 support. And GNOME 45 is also fully supported. And one of the best features of all is that the team has built a custom Calamari's-based initial setup wizard for easy installation. <laughs> and that's the, that's the number one thing here. Easy installation of Linux on the M1 and the M2 Max is now possible. <laughs> And all you have to do is install Fedora, Fedora Asahi Remix from Mac OS and run a, curl, a simple curl script, and that's it. And we're definitely at the point now where it's not just one little oddball, like M series thing where everything's got yeah. the uh, M chips in. We're talking MacBook Airs, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, Mac Studio, iMac, M1, mm -hmm. M2 are kind of omnipresent in that ecosystem. Yeah. Now I'm looking at the web zone here with mm -hmm. the features. I'm going to assume. The ones in not green, I'm hesitant to call that color red. Uh, oh, the, I know. It's like a pinkish color. <laughs> those are our features that don't work, question mark. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, this is what I'm feeling from this and what I'm seeing here. What well, we're seeing everything that works in green is display, keyboard, trackpad, headset jack, speakers, camera, the MagSafe, USB-C, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. And in the not green section, we have USB-C displays, Thunderbolt, USB 4, 
microphones and touch ID. Touch ID, yeah. And I think it's safe to say we're not quite a hundred percent point for point, but definitely enough to get you up and running. Yeah, All and right. easy too, <laughs> much easier. <laughs> oh, and apparently MagSafe is only available on the M2s. Oh yeah, yeah. Pretty wild. So this is this is pretty good. I'm looking forward to the 40 Fedora Asahi Remix uh, 40 edition. That yep. one, they, they said lots of things are going to be cleaned up and fixed. It'll be interesting to see what they're with. I'm 100% Waylon, all the way down. Very excited mm-hmm. about that. You know, Waylon's really good for SOCs. As I've discussed a couple of times, it's o- yeah. OpenGL is still a thing. It's still kicking around, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, apparently it's got really good um, audio because the line is not red and wiggly. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they they had to really uh, think about the audio system because they had to rebuild it, rebuild it from ground up. That's pretty cool. And I like that you can yeah. just install it with a curl command. Yeah. So just uh, <laughs> during the holiday seasons, you know, you're over at friend, family's house. Don't, don't accidentally run that. Make sure yeah. you do it only on <laughs> your device because only you are going to be able to undo it if such tragedies may occur. But then again, one of the neat things about developing on iOS or uh, iDevices, used ones anyway, I mean, more power to you if you can afford these things new, um, is they're, they're static, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just that Apple owns that entire chain. You know exactly what's going to be in every device that's released. There's very little guesswork for that. Yeah. So I think that's definitely helped. You know, you're not dealing with whatever laptop, Dell or HP or whoever's made in like the 35 different variants of each line that they have or Lenovo. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. Um, Hopefully in a couple of years, I'll be able to get uh, M1. Yeah. I think by the time we get to the like M4s, the uh, M1s will be too dusty and icky for the uh, (laughs) Apple faithful to have in their presence and or house. So maybe they'll end up uh, in a consignment shop and I'll pick one up to play around with. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it too. I've been wanting to play with the M1 and M2s, and I think now's the time to go get one. It, it's they're getting cheaper, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. You, I mean, you could probably talk yourself into getting like a used M1, just like yeah. pretend that you were buying like a Raspberry Pi four at the peak of the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Weigh it out like that. Before we get out of here, uh. You can send in show notes if you're a patron at uh, Death Note or above level. Uh, you get access to our show notes. You can watch them being made during the week, chime in, drop in story suggestions, or just leave them in our Discord under um, our show suggestions topic, like our Theron did. Brought this to my attention. You know what Jellyfin is, right? Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, well, some of you like to keep your digital media <laughs> stored at home. Well, Jellyfin, for those of you who are like, that sounds familiar. You, if you're not familiar with Jellyfin, you might know about a little program called Plex. And Jellyfin's mm-hmm. kind of like Plex, but really better in every conceivable way. Because um, Plex is kind of like a relic of the past. It used to be like the super hot, cool thing, and it worked on yeah. Linux and all that. But um, it, it's not that great anymore. And I, I would not suggest in setting up a Plex server. If you got one right now, you do you. But Speaking of relics of the past, <laughs> Blockbuster. Blockbuster. Yeah. Why are Blockbuster we bringing this VHS up? VHS tapes. <laughs> this enterprising young gentleman decided to squeeze a Jellyfin server inside of a Blockbuster VHS cassette tape. Now, it's not pretty. The user Fluffy Mumbles, using a 0 2 hot glue, bad soldering, grinding, and no small amount of prayer. <laughs> completely a custom job. I got to show the inside of this thing. It, it fits. <laughs> yeah, it fits. And what was what was fun fun is that the author said, "Oh, please excuse my soldering points. They're not that great." But it doesn't matter because you don't see it anyways <laughs> when it's closed up. <laughs> he said what he wanted to do is have something that's self-contained, <laughs> self-powered that he can just bring over to a friend's house and plug yeah. into their TV and like, hey, this is kind of cool. This is the movie thing. We plug it in and start watching it. We got the Pi Zero 2. We got a um, M.2 keyed SSD, I'm assuming, uh, over USB and a little power brick, power bank over that. Yeah, that, that's nice. Um, yeah. 
I just thought it was a little, you know, a fun little it holiday is. thing. All right. Well, I got two people to thank this week, Joe. Oh, yeah, we do. I got two different names. One I talked about on Saturday. If you're looking for the latest in Linux gaming news, mm-hmm. come check out Linux Gamecast. Uh, it's a comedy show that occasionally talks about video games. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you, Pedro and Jordan, have fun. <laughs> and very informative as well. And then sometimes information breaks out. It happens. <laughs> now, years ago, I enabled a thing. Uh, I think it was just like a bulkling with YouTube uh, called like Super Thanks or whatever it's called. I'm probably getting that wrong because YouTube's always A-B testing stuff, especially on me for no reason. I've never understood that. Like I've seen features come and go and I've talked about them. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, I don't know why I have it. And it'll just go away. But it was a thing for if you found a video or whatever, fun, informative, educational, whatever, you could like hit the little heart button, like, here's a tip, here's Mm -hmm. a buck or whatever. I'm like, cool. Years and years passed. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I'm like, all right, whatever. I just cut it on. I was like, ah, finally, this will, whatever. I'm (laughs) like, okay, here, I'll just cut it on. I completely forgot about it. And I I get a little ping and I'm like, what's going on? And uh, DCI like kicked me 200 yen. For, yeah, uh, that's so awesome. <laughs> I was troubleshooting FireWire audio interface. I'm like, hey, yeah. well, give me some recommendations. I'm like, yeah, I just did that. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. That's part of like my get up in the morning, like check YouTube comments. Like, okay, who can help out with this? And not, I mean, it's like a buck 30 or whatever it was, which is great. It's not about the money. It was just like, oh man, that means a lot. That means a lot. And yeah. not to be outdone, not to be outdone, because that was the first DCI was the first with the super thanks, but the first thanks for a comment on top of that, the first one for a video, Linux Gamecast Weekly. What was last week's episode? Uh, five something? Yeah. <laughs> for, 591. 591. Wow. Yeah. Getting Ed, close to 600. <laughs> right. Edgar dropped a uh, thanks on the video. So thank Yay. you, Edgar. Thank you, DCI. Wow. Interesting. That's pretty cool. That's cool. It comes out of nowhere. And we we got love from the community. It's like a new thing that shows up. And I'm like, what does this mean? I have to look it up because I'm easily confused. But something Mm -hmm. that's not very confusing, if you do like what we do, first off, if you do support us, kick us some coin every week, you're the real MVPs, but you already know that. You don't need anybody to tell you how cool you are. I'm going to tell you how cool you are anyway. We have a support page over at LinuxGameCast.com with a bunch of options. Patreon, LibrePay, PayPal, Bitcoin. If you're down with that, we got Amazon wish list. If you want to send us something, you know, a little present, we got a little Amazon wish list with a couple of trinkets. I got one for the studio. It's not little and it's not full of trinkets. Uh, if you want to be <laughs> some big baller, but I'll, I'll pay you back for that. Don't worry about it. I'll, put, I'll embarrass you every week um, with your names behind me and lights. We got a merch store. We got Amazon storefront. And of course, our humble affiliates. And, uh, yeah, Humble got me. Man, we got some new music because I, I was Humble was sending me too oh, many emails. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> like, Humble, you're sending me too many emails, man. I got to unsubscribe <laughs> or I, I got to go back and change this. And I went to go back and change that, which led me to find another game music bundle. And I'm like, dang it, Humble, you made me spend more money. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. <laughs> We're going to roll out for the rest of this. We'll see Yay. you next year. Until then, yeah. let's cue some music. Aww, happy credits. holidays. Christmas tree. <laughs> Aw, thank you to our advisors, Omegas and our Theron. And our executive producers, Barbara Ant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G. And our Chicago people, Empty, Blasphemia, Nubbin, Super Dust Out. And our sea mon- monsters, Renald, Rider X, Machina, Treadgills, Veritanuda. <laughs> and our death notes. Uh, the text is starting to get smaller. Uh, <laughs> and even smaller (laughs) we have so many lovely patrons to thank can't thank all of them in one show but hopefully over the several years 405 shows to do it joe you'll get it (laughs) all right everybody have a great one bye y'all love you all (laughs) 